Hey guys, and welcome again to the Oldie Fall Podcast. I'm your host, Nate Bahar. Today on The Pipeline, we're talking to Hussein Hazim, linebacker from York University. He's the top 12 in the country in tackles. He has six sacks to his name this past year. Went to the East-West Bowl 2013, 2014, and he played his OVFL football with the Scarborough Thunder, winning a championship in 2009. Hussein, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. So we're going to jump right into it. Your OVFL career, you played a whole bunch of years, you said. You played, you played pretty much your whole life. What was that 2009 season like in particular? Who were some of the teammates that you played with, and what was winning that championship? What did it feel like as a team? Uh, I think it's, to this day it's the only championship we've won. Well, I've won, so it feels amazing. And that team was absolutely stacked. I mean, to this day, probably the most talented team I've ever played on. Uh, I think five players from that team are now in the CFL drafted. We have uh, Chris Johnson, Jermaine Gabriel, Quinn Smith, Travis Bant, all were drafted to CFL last year or the year before. So crazy talent. That's pretty That's pretty crazy to talk about. I mean, not every OVFL team is going to be stacked with five five pros, but they've all got at least five CIS-level players and caliber players. So what was it like then going, going into practice every single day and banging your head against some of these guys who are about to start signing the paycheck in a couple of years to play football? I could probably try to kind of tuck your level of play up a little bit, I'd pro- you have to say, no? Oh, for sure, man. Like, I mean, just going from high school to there, it's, I found it a huge, huge jump, you know, and uh, it definitely helped me to get ready for the CIS. Uh, just playing OV, you know, playing against the top guys, not only were, like, I mean, those five guys playing, eventually played pro, I'd say of the 90% of the rest of the team are now playing the CIS or at one point play there. You know, it's... It definitely gets your, your your game on point, you know, gets you playing up there. Okay. So you play to the best guys. As a linebacker, you think it, it really, really helps you out? I mean, playing a physical position for, for us guys, for the receivers, the pretty boys, we're sitting on the outside not getting hit, whether it's practice or a game most of the time. But for you guys in the middle, you think it took added a little bit of toughness, a little bit of grit to you going going through your years when you're banging against these guys who are, who are just as big, just as developed as you, rather than in high school when sometimes you'll have a little bit less competition, especially in the middle, being physical. Did that physicality in practice help you develop? Oh, definitely, man. I mean, like, just in high school, you can get away just by being a bit of, I mean, a bit of an athlete. And when I hear you have no choice but to bang it. Mm-hmm. You just have to run around, make contact, and every play, you know, get better. Okay. So you had the studs across the board, like a lot of teams do. But to win the championship, we all know, coaching. We saw Bill Belichick win it this year. We saw Pete Carroll win it the year before in the NFL. So what was your coaching situation like there in Toronto? I mean, coaching was great, but I mean, that's I wouldn't say that was the biggest thing. It's not the quality. Well, quality was good, but I'd say the amount of coaching we got. Rather than high school, we have two or three coaches max and trying to focus on the whole team here. We had a coach or two for every position group, you know, focus on what you need to do, and that's pretty much it, you know, and get it done. Okay. Any of those coaches you still keep in contact with? Yeah, there's a few of them I keep in contact with, uh, especially uh, Robert Allen, Robert Bubba Allen. Uh, he's now coaching my younger brother, and, uh, you know, I, I I show face here and there, and, yeah, it's, okay. it's like a family there, man. Absolutely. What position does your brother play? Uh, he's an uh, O&D lineman. Okay. He's an uh, absolute monster, man. <laughs> <laughs> good to hear. So it's a, fam- it's a family affair, then. That's good to hear. Okay, yeah. so... You played there for a long time, right? What year did you say you started? Uh, what year? Uh, I think 04, 05. Okay, so you were, you were around 11, 12, 13 area? Yeah, around 11 or 12, yeah. Okay, okay. And now you, then you played until you were 17 or 18. Now you're playing your CIS ball in Toronto, too. You think you're going to see uh, yourself go back there and help out with the OV in, in your later days? Oh, well, definitely. I mean, I already do. Uh, after my first year uh, playing for York uh, that summer, uh, I was a head coach of a house league team, so I mean, little kids, I think age five to eight or six to eight or something like that. Okay. Just head coach, and uh, basically they split up the house league into four to six teams, and we all played against each other. And I think my team lost in the uh, semifinals, I think, or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that was a heartbreaking one. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, that's good. So you're already you're already giving back, which is good. That's one of the things that we hear at House Edge. We, we pride ourselves on that's what we're imploring the whole the whole province to do is give back so without that or sorry moving forward from that now what about the competition you played with I mean we, we talked about your team which was stacked 
What was the competition like in that Eastern Conference of the, of the OUFL, which is sometimes looked at as the weaker of the two? What was the competition you played like every or played with? Sorry, um, every Saturday. I mean, it was a great competition, and as far as weaker, uh, I don't know about weaker. I mean, I think the only loss we got that year, my my championship year, was against Ottawa, a team within the conference. So I wouldn't really say it's weaker, but I mean, it's great competition across the board. I mean, the majority of these guys everywhere they end up playing in the CIS somewhere, mm-hmm. and like I said before, it's not like high school where you're playing against maybe one or two potential CIS players, you know. But it's it's, uh, I mean, it gets you ready for the next level, that's for sure. Okay. With that, next level, recruiting. What was recruiting like for you be, um, because of OUFL? What did it do for you in the recruiting scene? How did it help you get to where you are now? Uh, I mean, I was I was recruited here and there in high school, but definitely not the same as OV. Just, uh, you know, coaches coming to see other players, you stand out, they, they notice you, and they start talking to you. And, like, being on a team that's not in his mind, with, like I said, 20 plus CIS players coming from that program. You know, coaches from all over come and watch one player, then they end up noticing so many others. And, you know, just the recruiting starts from there. And you get, yeah, you I know, know, you start talking to everyone pretty much. Absolutely. And that's a, that's a good point I want to touch on in some detail. For all the OFL guys out there, I mean, we know there's a lot of kids who want to get noticed. And they're doing all these other things to, to get noticed. They're joining these companies, they're trying to go down south. And the big thing to look at is, I mean, for a high school kids, say we're here in Ottawa we got a kid here in Ottawa, and there's two good kids on his team. It's difficult for a coach from Windsor or Alberta or Halifax to get into town to watch a game that has two CIS prospects on it. When you're playing on a team that's got 10, 12, 15, 20, like you were talking about, who's going against another team with just as many, that's where you start to get noticed, and that's where coaches can flock to. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that point up. Well, I was saying, yeah, like I said before, you know, it's having all those players on the team just definitely helped. And, like, coaches came, and they definitely take notice. You mm-hmm. know. All right, now moving forward. What are you doing now? You got you went to East West Bowl last summer. What are you doing this offseason to get ready to get prepared for the next level? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I saw that you actually interviewed uh, Richard Kari Kari a few days ago. I actually watched that interview. Well, it was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been training with him at his facility, CPC Fitness, uh, four to five days a week, getting ready for the combine. Uh, working pretty hard and see what happens from there. Right. My last question then, I'm going to backtrack a little bit again. For any OVFL kids that might be watching this, or any kids in general, I know you're from the GTA, which is, we see a lot of kids in the GTA be in high school, then think that they make the next jump, they got to take their talents down south, they got to try to go to these prep schools, these JUCOs. What do you have to say to, the, to these kids? I mean, I'm sure you know some people personally that have, that have tried that route, that have tried to go to the JUCO or the prep school. What do you have to say about the experience in general? Not that it's a bad thing, not that it's a good thing necessarily, completely unbiased. What's your opinion on that? I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Just uh, no matter where you go at the end of the day, if you're good enough, they're going to notice you at the next level. That's all I have to say, you know. And, and like, no matter how good you are as a player, you know, it doesn't really matter if your marks aren't there. No matter, like, you can be an amazing player, your marks aren't there, you're not going anywhere. So at the same time, focus on school, focus on what you need to do on the field, and they'll notice at the next level. That's all it really comes down to. Well, good man. Thank you so much for... Thank you so much for answering that one. Thank you for thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. I guess we had Hussein here. Hussein Hazim, York Lions linebacker. He joined us today. We're thankful for everyone here at House Edge Media. We want to wish him the best of luck going forward with the CFL scouting combine coming up soon. And we hope to hope to see big things out of you. Hope to see some eye popping numbers and we'll keep in touch. Have a good one, my man. Thanks again. For, okay, everyone, for everyone here at House Edge Media. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Like it on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Share it. Have a good one, guys. Take it easy.